teams sum of two numbers right so the so we said that uh, assume that the numbers are integers right but we could have also done the same with floats right nothing really would have changed in the program except for in main in the, in the file instead of writing instead of writing int of input we could have just done float of input right but i've not done that why do you think that's the case and i can also show you the test cases which are which were running for this uh, program i can show you the test cases right this is a this is how we create tests so the first input is sum 1 followed by some number of zeros the second is some 5 followed by some number of zeros and then this is the output that you get this is the expected output right but both of these are integers the expected output is of course an integer let's look at the other tests 10 5 15 again integers minus 120 minus 80 again integers something something some large number and minus of that large number again integers right and interestingly you'll also see that in the pattern matching so i'm saying that the answer should be exactly the same as this answer right the answer that your program gives should be exactly the same as this answer there were other options i could have used i could have used some match or some regular expressions compatibility other things which are there you don't need to bother about them now but you need to see that we are using the exact match so this brings me to the question again why have we not given you floating point numbers in this question
But to understand this finite delay, we need to understand how computers so So for But even before we go into decimal places and look at more complicated things, we'll look at something simpler. We'll first look at the number systems in decimal and correspondingly number systems in binary. So let's say if we had the decimal system. The decimal system. And the binary system. So decimal systems you write number as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Right? So what can you now say about the first? So we can also always just draw a line here. So pardon my, I've not left enough gap. Right. So we can clearly see that in this number system, we have some numbers on the ones place. And then we have an, some these numbers. This indicates the tens place. Right. It's nothing new. This is what I also mentioned that we can use a backup. Right. So let's say we have to give, we have to represent any number 13. Right. How do we think we can write the number 13 using tens place and ones place? How do we write 13? 13 is 1 into 10 plus 3 into 1. So this might look very elementary. This might look like why are we studying this in, in an IIT? But we'll just see in two minutes why this makes sense. So we have... If we have the number 13, that is 1 into 10 plus 3 into 1, right? So correspondingly, we also have binary numbers. So corresponding to 0, we write 0. Corresponding to 1, what do we write? 1. Corresponding to 2, 1, 0. 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Double zero one one zero one zero one zero one 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 zero zero one one zero one. Right now, if you have to look at any number in binary, instead of having ones place, twos place, threes, tens, ones place, tens place, hundreds place, what places do we say? Ones place or two to the power zero. Right. The second column will correspond to correspond to two to the power one. Two to the power zero. Two to the power one. Two to the power two. Two to the power three. Two to the power four. Right. Now, if I have to represent a number 13, number 13, right? So 1, 1, 0, 1. So, and then write 1, 1, 0, 1 in base 2. If you have to write what is the equivalent in base 10, this is 1 into 2 to the power 3 plus 1 into 2 to the power 2 plus 0 into 2 to the power 1, plus 1 into 2 to the power 0, right? So 2 to the power 3 is 8, plus 2 to the power 2 is 4, plus 2 to the power, plus 0 into 2 to the power 1 is 0, plus 1. So 8 plus 4 plus 0 plus 1 gives you 13, right? Any challenge in this? Does everyone follow the binary to decimal conversion, right? Given a binary number, we can 
calculate the equivalent decimal and given a decimal we can calculate the given binary number right so let's so binary to decimal i thought i felt that everyone would have probably seen it was fairly easy but i don't know if everyone remembers the decimal to binary how do we calculate decimal to binary how do we do the decimal to binary conversion we keep dividing by 2 so you have the number 13 divided by 2 you get the equation as 6 the remainder as 1 so you put this 1 on the right hand side 6 divided by 2 quotient as 3 remainder is 0 so 0 1 3 divided by 2 gives you 1 quotient is 1 remainder is 1 1 0 1 and then 2 dividing 1 gives you remainder of 1 so the number becomes 1 1 0 1 right so you keep dividing by 1 and you keep putting the the remainder on the rightmost side right as the more as the least significant digit in the binary number right. any question in this okay so this was the decimal to binary conversion perhaps all of you would have already seen this conversion right have you have you looked at the conversion when you're also when you're converting the decimal in 10 digit 10 or in base 10 to base 2 or to binary to that? Anyone who's seen that? Like, so we, we've seen that 13 corresponds to 1101 and 5. What does 13.125 correspond to? Because 13.125 is also the same as the number of 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 the after the decimal point, they follow slightly different convention, but not very different. So let's just see that also. So let's see decimal in base 10. So if you have 0 0.1 to 5, how do you write this? So previously we'd written for base 10, we'd written ones place, tens place, hundreds place, thousands place. Right? If we have to similarly write 0.215, how do we write this? No, there's no two power here. So it's in decimal only. One over 10 to the power one plus two over 10 to the power two plus five over 10 to the power three. Right? So does this make sense? Previously, when we were talking about the number 13, so previously we had one's place is basically 10 to the power 0, 10's place is 10 to the power 1. So we had powers increasing, going from left to right. And after the decimal points, the powers are 10 to the power minus 1, 10 to the power minus 2, 10 to the power minus 3, or this is equivalent to 1 into 10 to the power minus 1 plus 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 plus 5 into 10 to the power minus 3. Right. Does everyone follow this? Any question on this? Okay. So correspondingly, let's see what does this correspond in 0.215 will correspond in binary digits. Any answers for that? 0 0.001, yes. So first thing, binary digits, the only allowed symbols are zeros or ones, right? So it has to be point, some combinations of zeros or ones, right? So first, let me show you the answer, and then we'll walk through why that answer makes sense or how we can do this calculation. So this was point one to five base 10. This is one convention to write the base. If you write point zero zero one base two, right? this means zero into two to the power minus one plus one sorry plus zero plus zero into two to the power minus two plus one into two to the power minus three so to zero plus zero plus one over eight base then which is point one two five right so thus far we have not done anything new we have just looked what we were doing before in terms of when we didn't have decimal points, 
and we've just extended our conventions. Right. Everyone follows till now? Okay. But now how do we do this conversion from decimal to binary for the numbers which are uh, which have this decimal places for floating point numbers, right? Previously, when we were doing this conversion, you see, we were dividing by two, we were looking at the remainder, right? For this particular conversion, we'll do something different, but still related. So we have the number point one two five base 10. What is, what is this number in base two? That's the question, right? So we start with the number in base 10, Multiply that with two, that gives us 0 0.250. Look at the number before the dot, before the decimal point. Put it here. Repeat the procedure. 0 0.250 into two gives us 0 0.50. Again, you get a zero. So you, the second digit, you get a zero. And 0 0.5 into 2 gives you 1.0, just 1. 1. Therefore, this is least significant. This is most significant bit. Therefore, 0 0.125. Base 10 is 0 0.001. Base 2. Does everyone follow this conversion? Any questions on this? Zero point. <laughs> Does anyone in the audience want to answer? If you have, and by the way, this question will hopefully give you the answer of why we're not using words. Any questions? What do you have? Point one. Point one two five is the same as the last one. We just want the answer. So here, yeah, the thing is, stop when we get point two. We stop and we get the number one. If we start with point one to six, what do we get? So in fact, point one to six, let's maybe look at a simpler problem. Point two. Why don't all of you try to work it out in your notebooks? What is point two in base? Point in base is what in base two? So the question is. 0 0.2, 0 0.2, base 10 is question mark, base 2. Figure out the answer. Sorry? No. So the answer. You saw only exactly one of That is the end. That's how you're doing. You're doing part of it. You're doing part of it. You're
let's just try to answer this for one more minute and then we'll i show Okay, so some of you have now started to get the right answer. It's a recurring, recurring sequence. Let's try and work this out. You start with 0 0.2, multiply it by 2, you get 0 0.4. You look at the number before zero. You put a zero as the least. Uh, so maybe this is where I create the sequence. So you get a zero point zero at this point. Zero point four into two gives you zero point eight. Again, you get a zero. So a zero is appended. Zero point eight into two gives you one point six. You get a one. 0 0.001, but at this point, you don't multiply the next time with 1.6, you take the 0.6, and that's how you do the multiplication. 0 0.6 into 2, 1.2, again, take a 1, 0 0.0011, 0 0.2 into 2 gives you 0 0.4, but then if you see, we're at the same point, right? We started with 0.2. We are now again at 0.2. So therefore, everything in the sequence will get repeated. Right? Therefore, we can write this number as 0 0.0011, 0 point, sorry, not again as 0. 0, 0, 0.0011, 0, 0, 0.0011, and so on and so forth. Right? Now, the question of the accuracy of this or the precision of this number depends on how many digits you are willing to store or to allocate. Let's say, let's actually just work this out on the, on the interpreter. So, so what does 0 0.0011 mean? 0 into 2 to the power minus 1 plus 0 into 2 to the power minus 2 plus 1 into 2 to the power minus 3 plus 1 into 2 to the power minus 4, right? Let's just say that if we had only four digits of precision allowed to store, right? Can everyone just take a note of this number? 0 0.0011 repeated multiple times, right? Let's just go in and create a new notebook. So we had, so we use use only four digits of precision. So then our answer is zero into zero divided by two plus zero divided by four plus one divided by eight plus one divided by 16 which gives you 0 0.1875. Right? So remember that the original number that you had was 0 0.2, which you're trying to represent. But you had, if you had only four digits of precision, your number is an approximation. And it's quite a bad number to be only 0 0.1875. Right? But if we had the sequence repeating, right? so if we had eight digits of precision, plus 0 over 32, plus 0 over 64, plus 1 over 128, plus 1 over 256. I'm doing it very inefficiently. I should have written a loop, but I'm just showing the number that we'll get. Is this a better approximation already? So this number is already much more closer to the number you're trying to represent. If we keep doing this, we'll get very close to 0 0.2. Right, but we'll actually require an infinite series to be exactly able to represent zero point two. But do we have do we have infinite memory in a computer system? No. Therefore, the floating point numbers that we see are precise to the number of digits which are being used for the storage. 
right? Say for any arithmetic, any mathematical operations that we do with floating point numbers, you'll have to be very careful about the precision that you're dealing with, right? So therefore, when you see this number 0 0.2, you print 0 0.2. While you printed 0 0.2, the actual representation of the 0 0.2 is not point. It would be some complex number, which would be in a binary, it would be point zero zero one one zero zero one one zero zero one one till the number of digits that you allow for precision. Right? So this is now clarifying the issue that floats. We can't use arbitrary arbitrary precision, or we can't directly do any operations with floats. We need to be a little careful. The way we can also see this question is, let's say if we were to do print 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1, what is the expected answer? We get the correct answer. So no problem in that. What happened now? So the 0 0.1, which was represented in by memory was not exactly the same. You just lucky that this one was different and represented to get the point. But if you try different permutations and combinations and different numbers, you will not get exact numbers when you're dealing with floating point numbers. Right? Because this depends on the precision. 0 0.1 is not exactly 0 0.1. It would be something very close to 0 0.1. Therefore, three numbers which are not exactly 0 0.1 will not have something which is exactly 0 0.1. Right? So, this is something we need to be careful about. Yes. So, it's just a representation. Yes. It's just a representation and floating point issues. Yes. But if we do this some more times, this seems to be correct seems to be correct. Again, we were expecting point eight to be the answer, but we're getting something different. So in general, we should be avoiding any calculations of floating point numbers. We'll be looking for exact answers. But we expected point eight to be the answer to be point eight. So when we are expecting answers to be so, but, but the underlying number is itself stored in float. So, if you multiply something which is imprecisely stored with 10, so multiplying something with 10 means adding the number 10 times. There is floating point in precision. So instead of saying that, so let's first have a variable called tolerance. And let's say this is a very small number, 0 0.001. Right? So let's say our expected number is 0 0.3 and our actual number is 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1. So using these three variables, what do you think should be the check that we should be doing? To see if the expected is approximately equal to the actual number. So can we say that We'd want, let's say, expected minus actual to be lesser than, let's say, or we'd want the actual to be lesser than expected plus tolerance. And we'd also want the actual to be greater than expected minus tolerance. Right? If both of these conditions hold true, we can say that our actual value is very close to the expected value and we should be happy. And of course, this depends upon the tolerance and how precise we want to be for the tolerance also. 
So this is one way you could write. Or if you want to write this more succinctly, you can write the absolute value of actual minus expected should be less than tolerance. So if you print this, what do we expect the answer? We get it true. Right? So in most of the cases, this is the way you should be using floating point checks or arithmetic for comparison. You should not do using actual yield is expected. Actual yield is expected to I will just confirm that for you. Right. Actual is not equal to expected, but within the limits of floating point position, they are both the same. Right. Does everyone follow this? Any questions on this? So this is the reason we had not given you such questions in the in the reference or the greater assignment. If we indeed wanted to give you such questions, we would have had to set the automatic test to incorporate some of this problem. Right. So is there a question? So then I have a to Okay, so there's also very nice documentation about floating point precision, which is available on python.org. So if you go to the Python tutorial, go to floating point arithmetic issues and limitations. This article very nicely mentions this. So you can read more about this on this article. I will link it. I will just, let me just do that right away. I will just put it here. Now it's in the, in the notebook, which we'll share. Okay. So now let's pick up another interesting topic, which we started yesterday. But we didn't finish. So we were looking at the help yesterday, right? So we, we started with the conditionals, if you remember, and we looked at the truth tables. Right? So we looked at the truth table, false and false. If you talk about the and for the conditional, we looked at false and false means false, false and true means. False, true and false means false, and true and true means true. The important thing to note here is that if you see a false in the first expression, let's say this is x1 and x2. If you see that x1 is false, then you need to care about finding x2. This is a slightly tricky question. The thing that we find to solve with x1 
and x2 if x1 is false can x1 and x2 ever be true so at that point should we be even evaluating what is x2 there's no point so this concept is known as short circuit you might have heard of the short circuit you might have also done that homework but this is the concept of short circuiting if x1 so basically if we have if we have x1 and x2 if x1 is false then the whole then the whole expression whole expression is false no need to evaluate x2 right and we can also just look at the help for this the expression x and y or x1 and x2 first evaluates x or x1 if x1 is false or x is false then you just return a false right but if x1 is true or the first expression is true then you do indeed need to evaluate the second expression or x2 or y right because then you need to check if both of them are true or not but if the first one is false you can short circuit you don't need to evaluate the second expression so these are some of the tricks which many languages have inbuilt this saves the program this makes the program execute quicker okay what will be the natural extension of this for the or case if you have x1 or x2 so if we look at the or truth table false or false is false false or true is true true or false is false and true or true is true so if you look at the last two rows it will be a true and at x then you want to be true there is no need to evaluate the second expression of what so that is short circuiting which will happen for such condition checking you will directly put in answer as again this helps the program this will help the program to run quicker any question in this okay so if there are no questions then we can perhaps have the quiz now the important thing for the quiz is that first i don't know if you are how much in the foundation program you have been told about the cheating the anti plagiarism and the follow up cheating means that you are doing it if you get the data in the 